be full of joy always that's extravagant joy that is exuberant joy that is unspeakable joy that is radical joy that is unshakable joy that my people will have the full measure of the joy of the Lord let me give you another reason why we can have joy no matter what always 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 be full of joy in the Lord if I am in Christ Next is what? God will meet my needs. There's so many things he can handle. You see, when, when we were young, you say, well, when I grow old, oh, it will be great. I, can, I, I won't have any problems. How many of you know that the older you get, the more problems you have? The older you get, the more you realize your limitation. Amen. Again, thanks for, for coming. Uh, today we are continuing our Unshakable Joy series where we are uncovering how to unlock joy in our life. The Bible says the joy of the Lord will be your strength. You know, life is burdensome. Life is cruelsome. But God has given us a resource so that we, we don't live by it is what it is. Bad things will happen in life. Challenges will happen in life. But God says you don't have to succumb to it. I will give you something on the inside that will well up from our inside of you to contain and control what's going on on the outside so that bad things could be happening, but it will not affect you. And that resource is called joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord, he says, will be your strength. You could be broke, you could be homeless, you could be sick, you could have no money, you could have enemies uh, going left and right. But God is saying all those could, could just not phase you when you tap into my joy. And how many of you know that around this season, this time of the year, we desperately need massive doses of joy? I should raise both hands up. Things are tough. These are difficult times that we live in. We need joy in our life. I need joy. You need joy. And, and this is not some casual thing that is nice to have. It's a must have. You got to have. Your job will not do that. Your clothes will not do that. The car you drive will not do that. Your friends and your family members, everything, your insurance card that you have, everything you have will not get through, through this. You know, as humans, we have a fundamental need for joy in our life. I mean, you could have everything stacked up and still be miserable, be sad, be depressed, be frustrated without joy in our life. We need joy to function in life. You need joy to be creative, to be passionate, to be courageous, to be positive. You need joy to keep going, to be able to fulfill the best days of your life. Without joy, you are stuck. Do you believe that? We need joy in life. Life without joy, hear this, is overwhelming. Life without joy is overburdening. Life without joy is oppressive. Do you believe that? You could have a bank account filled with cash in that. You could be driving the fastest riding car, living in the most expensive home, sleeping in the most expensive bed without joy. It is meaningless. We need joy in life. And studies have shown this, actually, that the more joy we have in our lives, the more productive you are. The more joy you have, the more effective, the more creative, the more peaceful, the more joy you have, the less stressed you have in your life. So it's not, I need another job, I need more money, I need nice clothes, I need a vacation, all those are nice, but you need joy. That is the catalyst to live the kind of life that God has created us to live, that abundant life life that much better life that that he says that people cannot have on their own you see it's so important here this that businesses today focus on customer satisfaction as a factor of productivity and profitability in life why do you think when you go to a company after that you get a survey how did we do what can we do better they want to find out 
What gave you joy? Because they know that you're going to come back. You're going to tell others about that. They will be productive and profitable when they can measure your satisfaction, your joy factor after interacting with them. Businesses also spend a lot of time also trying to figure out employee satisfaction. And so you may work for a company that every now and then there's a survey going out. Larger companies have that, right? How are we doing? How do you feel? Do you have a best friend in the walk? Rate your manager. Is he supporting you? And when the scores come, they just don't hide it away. They talk about it. They find out what they can do to move the lever. Why is that? Because they know that when you feel good about the job, it will translate to how you do your job and how you interact with coworkers and employees, which will lead to productivity and profitability. Joy is, is, it's not a, a nice to have. It's a must have in life. And God knows that. So he created us with a massive need for joy in life. And he tells us that he is the kind of God who will provide joy for us. As a matter of fact, one of the names of God you ought to know in Psalm 43 in Hebrew is this, is this, is El Sim Katakli, El Sim Chakatli, the God of exceeding joy. You ought to know that your God is a God of exceeding joy. And every name of God is a blessing he shares. Every name of God is something you can expect him to do for you. Every name of God is a benefit that you can tap into. He says, I'm a God that provides exceeding joy because I created you needing joy in your life to function. We see Psalm 43 verse 4. The psalm is saying this. Read that with me on the screen. It says, I will go to who? God, the source of my, all my joy. I will go to God, the source of all my joy. <laughs> now, it's nice to <laughs> have a great meal. Hopefully, after church, you're going to have a meal. Maybe someone here on, online is, is looking forward to this church ending so I can have lunch. You can have lunch. But guess what? You're going to eat and it'll be gone, isn't that? God said, I want to give all the joy that you need, all the joy. Joy for your marriage, joy for your health, joy for your parenting, joy for your goals, your aspiration, all the joy, all the joy that you need. Every day you wake up for every situation, every encounter, every interaction, God is saying, I have, you need joy, and I'll provide all the joy for every situation. Even when you are grieving, even when you are sick, even when old age is catching up on you, God is saying, I want you, I'll give you the joy like an effervescent river. To boil up in your life. You say, Pastor, you don't understand. My situation today, when I grow old, things will get worse. Check in with this God. Get to know this God. Because he's the God. He's the God who is the source of all your joy. In every stage, every situation of your life. Hello. So, we're going to talk about it today. And we've been looking at joy for the last three weeks today. For three Part one and part two, we looked at joy from Romans 8. We're going to be looking today at the book of Philippians. When you talk about joy, another place you look to, the book of Philippians, a little short book in the New Testament. It's only four chapters long, but 16 times in four chapters, the Apostle Paul says, rejoice, be joyful, enjoy life. 16 times, he talks about joy, 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 joy. Because it's necessary in life. And here's the important thing about Paul, that God inspired him, spoke to his heart and mind to pen the letters of Philippians. The amazing thing is that Paul didn't write this book when he was on vacation in, on, in some exotic island. He wrote the book of Philippians when he was in prison, in a dark, cold dungeon, in Rome waiting to be executed. <laughs> So in the darkest days of his life, Paul writes the most positive book in the Bible. And in here, he gives us six joy builders. God says, I am the source of all your joy, but you're going to have to activate it. God is saying, I'm putting blessing within your reach. You're going to have to take it. You're going to have to eat. You're going to have to accept it. You're going to have to put it into practice. God never created us as robots. He wants us to be participants of our victory. 
So he, he, Paul, inspired by the Holy, gives us six joy builders. And these are the opposite of the joy busters in your life. Every single one of those is an antidote to the kind of stuff that kills your joy in life. So today I want to share three of the six with you. God will and come back next week, tune in next week. And then we're going to look at, at the, the remaining three. Let me encourage you to really pay attention to this. I mean, it may sound so simple, but they are so powerful, so effective. How many of you know that they are the simple things in life that make the most difference? How many of you know that? If you begin to practice these things, I'll give you three today, next week's three of those. If you begin to, to practice them, here's what you'll find. You'll find depression lifting from your life. You'll find discouragement diffusing in your life. And you will have a new sense of joy in your life. Let me give you these three. Let me blue sky those for you, and then we will drill down. Number one is this. Forget about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live joyfully on purpose. Repeat that with me. Forget about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live joyfully on purpose. One more time. Forget about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live joyfully and purpose. And so when you live here and you say, hey, I was in church today. Somebody says, hey, how was church about? He had three things. You got to tell them. Let's all say that together. Forget about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live joyfully and purpose. If you do these three, you're going to have the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Coronavirus could be here till the cows come home. Storms could be coming till tomorrow. People could be hating on you until the cows come home. You could have sickness in your body where modern medicine cannot cure. And still the joy of the Lord will be your strength. People will, who have money and have good health will be depressed, will be worried, will be fearful, and you will still be walking on cloud nine because this is what it takes to activate the joy of the Lord in your life. Forget about the past. Don't worry about the future. Live on purpose. So let's delve right into it. Let's, let's unpack these things. If I'm going to have a joy-filled life, here's what I must do. I must, I must number one, number one, I must learn to forget what's behind. Say that with me. I must learn to forget what's behind. I must learn to forget what is behind. Many times I hear people say, well, Pastor, I will never forget about this. I, I can never forget this. I keep remembering this. You see, the brain is not that smart. The brain cannot categorize things. The brain cannot prioritize. It's just a repository. It's a storehouse of events and activities. It is up to you to prioritize whether this is important or not important. Whether I'm going to think about this or I'm going to reject this. God gave you the power of your brain. You say, Pastor Mike, these things keep, I keep thinking about these things all the time. You can forget about stuff that goes through your mind. If everything that goes through your mind, mind comes out of your mouth, you're going to be in serious trouble. You say, I just thought about it and so you're going to say it? You've got to learn for you to be joyful, to learn to forget what's behind. And Paul says, if you want to enjoy life, there are some things that you've got to get rid of. There are some things that you've got to throw overboard in life because they are wearing you down. They are overburdening your life. They are killing your soul. You've got to learn to forget what's behind. And that's the first thing you've got to do if you're going to have a joyful life. You need to eliminate. You need to discard. You need to abandon as worthless, every regret about the past. We all have regrets. As you raise both hands, there are some stuff that I shouldn't have done that happened to my life that wasn't great. Everybody has skeletons in the closet because nobody is perfect. But hear this. Regret and the guilt are kill joys in your life. The thing that is killing your joy the thing that's causing depression, not giving you the energy to be creative, not causing positivity that you need to be able to put one foot in front of the other to try something new in your life is regret and, and guilt. And God is saying, you need to forget about it. Sir Arthur Cohen wrote Sherlock Holmes. The whole series, he decided to play a prank on some very, very important people in England. So he sent an anonymous note to eight of the prominent, wealthiest men in England. And the note said this, 
all is found out, flee at once. Short note. All is found out. We know what you did. Run away. In other words, he just wanted to see what happened. Guess what? In 24 hours, all of the then top eight prominent wealthiest person in England left the country. I'm sure that there are certain things, certain things that if we found out about you, perhaps, perhaps, somebody at the sound of my voice, you're going to change the channel. Somebody here in this church today or later you hear this message, you want to leave this service right now. Because we all have regrets. And the problem about regrets is my brother, my sister, it doesn't work. You cannot change your past. One more time. You cannot change your past. It will only make you miserable. Remembering the ugly, bad, negative things that happened in your past. Doesn't matter whether somebody did it or you did it. It will only make you miserable and it will kill your joy. We get stuck in the land of if only. If only I did this. If only I didn't get fired from my job. If only I went here. If only I didn't buy the stuff. If only I didn't go here. If only I didn't say this. If only I didn't. If only, in the land of if. You get stuck in the land of if only. If only. If only I could redo my life. If only I could change this. If only I could resolve this. If only this could happen. If only it's gone. The past is in the past. You can't do it over again. It's gone. So you can't change a thing by regretting. It's a huge waste of time. So what do you do? The Bible, the creator of your life, he says what you need to do is forget about it. Say that with me. Do what? Forget about it. One more time. If your, if your child comes to you, your granddaughter comes to you, and they are regretting about something that happened, and that you tell them, son, daughter, friend, husband, neighbor, customer, pastor, anyone, do what? Forget it. One more time. And until you forget about it, my brother, my sister, you cannot move forward with passion. You're going to get stuck in the past. Once you forget it, you have your life back to move forward. Here's what God, speaking through the Apostle Paul, tells us. Look at Philippians 3.13. Philippians 3.3. Paul is speaking. He says what? One then I do is what? Forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. You can reach what is ahead when you are silent with regret. Allow your enemies to think about all the bad stuff that you've done in the past. Let them think about it. Oh, Pastor Mike, this is what happened to him. I'm not thinking about it. You go ahead and block your life. Stay in the prison of the past thinking about all the bad things that happened to my life. What I'm doing is what? Forgetting what is in the past so that I can do my best to reach forward ahead. You can't reach forward ahead at your best. You cannot be at your best in life. As a mom, as a dad, as a husband, as a wife in that marriage, parental, your kids, when you are filled with regret about what could have, should have happened to you, you got to forget what is what behind. So that you can do your best to reach what's ahead. And as a child of God, hear me loud and clear. You got to hear the power of the gospel. That's what the gospel is all about. That's why they call it gospel, meaning good news. If you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, your sins have been washed away from you. Hello? If you've come to God as we pray today and ask God for forgiveness, forgive us all our sins. You've told God, I'm sorry, I've blown it, I've made a mistake. Get what? God takes your sins and throws it far away into the deepest part of the ocean and he puts no fishing sign on that. So why are you digging up stuff that God has forgotten? Why are you remembering, regurgitating, rehearsing, playing the films of all the bad things that have happened in your life that God will never remember anymore? When you go to heaven, it will never be talked. It's no longer against you anymore. It's been forgiven and forgotten. Let's look at some scriptures here to, to motivate you so that you can leave the bad stuff behind. So the joy, joy will implode in your life. Oh, look at Psalm 103 verse 12. 
God is speaking. He says, he, God, has what? Has removed our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. If God has removed something far away from us, why are you picking it back up? Why are you living in self-condemnation? Hello? The devil has done nothing, no. You are the one who are, who are out there. You've put that on like a blanket. You are wearing that suit, that coat, that dress about the sin, the shame, the mistake, the heartache, the pain, what they did to you that hurt, what you did that you didn't like. God is saying, I have removed that. The world removed away from you. You say yes, amen, and you walk in the power of forgiveness. Glory to Almighty God. Now you are ready to live. Look at this next portion of scripture in Micah. I love this. Micah 7. Verse 18 and 19. <laughs> oh, let's read it together. It says, there's no other God like you, O Lord. Hear this. You forgive the sins of your people. You take pleasure in showing us your constant love. You will be merciful to us once again. You will trample our sins on the foot and send them where? To the bottom of the sea. When God speaks repetitively, God speaks convincingly, God speaks confidently, you all hear that. God says the same thing over and over again. You forgive our sins. You are merciful to us one more. You trample our sins under your foot. You send them to the bottom of the sea. How many times does God, God need to tell you that you got to forget about the stuff that happened in the past that is killing your joy? You say, Pastor Mike, how, I, I, oh, I, as for me, I don't forget anything. The people who say this, Forget all the good stuff. They only remember all the bad stuff. As for me, I don't forget all. Well, what about all the good things that happened to you? What about all the blessings God has done in your past? What about all the visions that God has spoken in your life that you ought to pursue? What about all the new things? They don't. They don't. As for me, I don't forget things. You don't forget things? So you remember what I told you 15 years ago? You were remembering what happened to you as a little boy or a little girl. You don't forget things when God is saying as a child of God. God has what? He has forgiven them. It's on that God has trumped, he stepped all over it. And he sent them in the hurled them in the depths of the sea, never ever, never ever to receive them. <laughs> oh, look at Isaiah 54, verse 4. If that if there were really enough, God speaks so convincingly. God is speaking. Hear the voice of God. Let's read that together. God says, What? Don't be afraid or ashamed, and don't be discouraged. And you won't be disappointed. Why? Forget how sinful you were when you were young. Stop feeling ashamed. The Lord is telling you, you are there. Pastor Mike, you don't understand. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm worried. I'm afraid. I feel so yucky. I feel like a bum. I feel like a failure. God is telling you this. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed. Stop. Stop feeling ashamed. Stop. 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 Stop the self condemnation. Stop the self condemnation. Leave it to your enemies, oh. Leave it to the gossipers, the people who look at you and they see your failure, your mistakes, your past, because it makes them look better. Some people are like that. They don't feel good about themselves. So they ought to what, put you down in order to feel good about themselves. Let them be busy doing that. But as for you, don't do that yourself because the Bible says don't. If you want to live a joyful life, a passionate life, a creative life, you want to start new things for God. Stop. Get rid of the past, the yucky stuff in your life. Forget about the past. Look at Hebrews 8.12. You say, Pastor Matt, you don't understand. I've done some wicked things in my life. I've done some mean things in my life. Yes, you have. God knows it. But God is saying, the blood of Jesus has washed you all of your wicked things. <laughs> Amen. That's what grace is called. It's called grace. But look at Hebrews 8, 12. It says what? I will forgive them, God is saying, for the wicked things they did. You did it. You did it. Yes. Somebody comes and says, you did this. You see, yeah, I did it. But God's forgiven me. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not dwelling on them anymore. 
And God speaks very convincingly in Hebrews 8 12 says, I will forgive you for the wicked things you did, and I will not what? I will not what? Remember them. So if your God, your creator, your judge, your father, your king, your lord, your master, your savior says, I've forgiven you, and I will never remember them no more, what business do you have remembering them? Why? Why? You tell, he said, I, I can't stop thinking about it. You tell your mind what to do. Today you decided, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to wear this dress, I'm going to do this, and then guess what? You did it. You overrode. If your mind told you not to come to church, you said, no, this is what I'm going to do. So you have the power over, you have the power of choice. You have the power of decision. You have the power to prioritize the things that are important that come through your mind. Your mind your, 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 well, you could do laundry today. You could go to the grocery store today. No, 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 I'll do that later today. That's what I'm you overrode and God is saying, I want you to override, I will write those thoughts of the past that will kill your joy because without joy, you're stuck. Without joy, you're stuck. Oh, but wait, look at what's happening in the news. Oh, 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 oh. You're going to be miserable and you'll be stuck in life. It's not that God doesn't want to bless you, but you've made a choice that, 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 that saddles you, chains you to your past. I will forgive you for all the wicked things you've done. He said, yeah, God, God knows you've done wicked things. So what? He has forgiven me. Glory to almighty God. Oh, look at Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. <laughs> the Lord says, this is not from Mike. It's from who? The Lord. <laughs> the Lord says, hear this. Do not what? Clench to the events of the past. If someone says, is this in the Bible? Yeah, it's right here. This is what it says. This is what, forget about the past. Forget about what's behind. Forget about the things that's making you sad. Why? Because God says so. What authority do I have to be able to forget about those bad things? Because what? God says so. Who told you that? God says so. Do not clench to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for the new thing I'm going to do. It is happening already. You can see it now. You cannot see what God is doing in your life when you are holding on to all the bad things that have happened to you. Everybody has something that is hurtful, that is painful, that is ugly, that will cause them to cry all night and ball up in their bed and not step outside. And God is saying, don't cling to those events in the past. You got to let it go. So for you to live a joy-filled life, my brother, my sister, forget about the past. You cannot be happy and harbor regrets at the same time. You cannot be happy and be guilty at the same time. Hello? I woke up this morning and said, it's going to be a great day. Not because I've been perfect, but because... God says so. He says, I should forget about everything that hasn't worked out right in my life and make it a good day. And so I say, yes, Lord, it's going to be a great day, and I feel good. You ought to do the same. You can be happy and have regrets and be guilty at the same time. So God says, to live a joyful life, you've got to let go. You've got to abandon. You've got to forget all regrets. You've got to forget all, <laughs> every grief, every grudge, every guilt, those three Gs, grief, grudges guilt let it let it go let it go you have the joy of the lord will be your strength but here's the second thing from the book of philippians god teaches us if i'm going to have a joyful life if i'm going to have a joyful life i must what i must what help me out get rid of all the worries about the future now, we also have to face life on the other side of life. There's the past life and the future life. There are some people who are worried what? Some people have PhDs in worry. Like I'm preaching right now. Somebody now or later here, this week, it will be worried. Worry about everything. Get, get, get up in the morning, worried. Go through the day, worried. Go to sleep, worried. Get up, worried. Every, like worry, 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 worry. Something's going to happen. Somebody's saying bad things about me. I could die. I could get sick. My child could, the phone could ring. Something bad could happen. Hey, worry, worry, worry. This car I'm driving could stop. This, everything could go off here in this place. This house could burn. Hey, worry, 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 worry. And God is saying, you cannot be worried and, and be worried and be joyful at the same time. When worry steps into your heart, joy runs away and stays out until you get rid of worry. And so if you're going to enjoy life in the present, my brother, my sister, you've got to get rid of all the worries about your future. It 
hasn't happened. So number one, regrets and guilt is a killjoy. Forget about the past. Worry is also one of the greatest killjoys in life. God saying you got to get rid of all worries about your future. See, we've talked about this many times. You say, Pastor Mike, I worry all the time. You know why you worry all the time? <laughs> because you keep thinking about something, you keep thinking about something, you keep thinking about something, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you keep fantasizing it's going to get worse and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets bigger than the problem itself. It's not that bad. You've made it worse. You fantasized about bad things, and that bad thing has created a big, humongous image in your mind. And now you're stuck. Worry makes things worse. Doesn't make it better. Doesn't keep it the same. Worry makes things worse in life. There are some people today, if they told you your problems, you will solve your problems for them. You just tell them, no, it's not that bad. Because others have had worse problems and have made it through. And your problem is not that bad. Hello? It's not, tell somebody close to you, whatever you're going through, it's not that bad. <laughs> because worry will make it worse. I, 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 is anyone feeling what I'm saying? <laughs> so for you to live the joy of the Lord, to be your strength, to overcome everything we're going through in our life currently and in the future, God says, I got to get rid of worry all the time. The more you worry about something, the bigger it gets in your mind. My marriage, my marriage. This is what he said. This is what they did. This is what happened. Yes, you have a problem, but you've made it bigger. You worry. You've exaggerated. You fed your own emotions into it, and it's getting worse than what it really is. Worry turns more, more. <coughs> hills into mountains, something that is just in your way. All of a sudden, it's become a humongous mountain that you cannot overcome. Now you are stuck. So while regret is useless, it kills your joy, worry, worry is just as useless as that. You cannot change your past by regretting. We said that. You can also change your future by worrying. Tell somebody, you cannot change your future by worrying. See, some people think that they are doing something about the situation by worrying. I'm worried about it, so I'm doing something. What, what, I'm, I have to do something about it. This is what I'm doing. I'm worrying about it. No, worrying isn't changing anything about your future. I'm worried about I'm worried about my child. I'm worried about my son. I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about my house. I'm worried about my health. Worried. You feel it. You think you're doing something by worrying about it. Worry is like sitting in a rocking chair, going back and forth, back and forth. But you you think you're going somewhere, but guess what? You are just where you are. You haven't changed a thing. And so here's the antidote to it. For you to enjoy the joy of the Lord, to activate the joy of the Lord, that will give you peace. It will give you stamina. It will give you the energy to climb every high mountain, go through every high valley, be creative to start new things for God, to put one foot in front of the other, to lift your head up when pressure on the outside is trying to push you down. What you need to do, my brother, my sister, is to get rid of all the wars. Look at what the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians 4. Six, Philippians 4 says, God says, don't worry about anything. Now, what, what's not included in anything? Nothing. Everything is included in that. See, Pastor Mike, you don't understand. I, I, I have to worry about it. This is the big one. <laughs> God says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what? He says, it's, it's, it's my job, oh, so I need to worry about it. No, no God, God says, don't worry about what? It's my marriage, oh, I need to worry about it. God says what? It's my finances, so oh, I need to worry about it. It's my car, oh, I need to worry about it. It's my health, oh, I need to worry about it. So every reason that you come up with yourself, that you've got a legitimate reason in the face of the earth to worry about, God says, don't worry about it. <laughs> so forget about the past. <laughs> don't worry about anything happening in the future. Instead, here's what God says. 
He said, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Now, translation here is this. Translation says, God, God said, there are two days you shouldn't worry about, about anything. <laughs> two days. Yesterday and tomorrow. <laughs> F- forget about the bad things that happened in the past. That's yesterday. Tomorrow hasn't happened. Don't worry about it. Now, he said, what should I do? What should I do then? What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> When God tells you not to do something, he tells you what to do about it. He says what? Don't worry about anything. Instead, do what? Talk to God about it. You see, when you are worrying, you are talking to yourself about it, but you don't have answers to your problem. You can calm yourself down. You can encourage yourself, can't you? And so you, you are inadequate. You don't have the skills, the money, the contact, the ability to be able to solve the problem. So when you are talking to yourself, you don't, there, there is no comeback. There is no response. It's like talking to an empty chair. So God is saying, hey, stop talking to yourself because you're going to worry yourself to death. Instead, well, come tell me about it. Tell me. Tell God. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. I'm worried. I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm hurt. This is bad. Come talk to me about it. And God is saying, here's what I will do. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. By the time you are talking to God, God is reminding you what happened three years in your life. God is beginning to remind you that, hey, four years in your life, you remember what happened? You remember when you came to this country and you didn't know what was happening? Look at how far I brought you. When I went in your mama's room, you never knew that you'd be here today. Look at how God has turned things around. Look at how God has kept food on your table, clothes on your back. God has never turned his back on you. That in the long run, God has been good. In the long run, God has been faithful. In the long run, God has provided for you. In the long run, God has solved problems today that you don't even remember. You will stop complaining. You say, thank you, God. You've done it before. I know right now. I don't know what to do, but I know you will make a way where there's no way. Glory to Almighty God. So Paul is telling us so far that if you want to be joyful, you could be a millionaire and be miserable. Go home and Google, go on YouTube and find out all the people who won the lottery, millions of dollars and what's happened to their life now. Shall it profit a man, a a woman to gain the whole world and lose your soul and lose your life? You want to be filled with joy, you've got to forget about the past. You've got to forget if you've got to forget about the past. You've got to get rid of worry about your future. And you need to focus on now. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 8. Why, Why shouldn't I worry about the future? I shouldn't worry about the future because what the Bible says, what? First Corinthians 1 8. Jesus will keep you strong until the end. Stop right there. See, God doesn't give us explanations. If He explained to us everything that's going on in your life, you wouldn't even understand that. I mean, if you have gone to a doctor, a doctor tried to explain to you about your health condition, and you are more confused. You say, just tell me, tell what uh, am, uh, am I gonna be okay? They pull all your blood work. They pull all your EKG results. They pull all the films. They're trying to show you all these things. You're more confused. <laughs> then you walk right in. It's like, I'm glad you know what's going on. So what should we do then? Jesus is saying, I will give you an assurance of an explanation. And you take this to the bank and sleep on this every day you are worried that Jesus will keep me strong until the end so that there will be no wrong in me on the day our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. He will. What you can't do right now, God is keeping you strong. Say, say that God is doing what he's keeping you strong. The thing that is making you weak, the thing that's making you worried and afraid, the thing that is causing you to have palpitation of your heart, your, your, don't get your, high, don't get your, high, your, your pressure high. You can't handle it. Leave it in the hands of Jesus because he says, I am right now, right now, as you are hearing this message, I am working around the clock to keep you strong till the end. Your future is brighter than your past. Say that with me. Your future is brighter than the past. Because Jesus said he will keep you strong till the end. So that there will be no wrong in you. A time will come, you will look back at the events that make you sad, and you won't even remember. Somebody has got to remind you. 
Because God says this. Worry is not a good thing. <laughs> the old English word for worry, it means this. Worry means to choke, to strangle. And that's what's happening when you are worried. You are choking yourself. You are strangling yourself. It's, it's like you, you tying a rope to your neck. You are cutting off the blood to your cathartic artery. You're not getting stuff flowing to your brains. You are suffocating yourself from life vitality when you are worried. So Paul says, get rid of all worry about your future. Instead, pray. So guilt and regret is a kill joy. God says, for me to live the joyful life, I must let go. I must abandon. I must forget all regrets. All the three Gs. The grief, <laughs> the guilt, and the grudges. God let it all go. Dump them. Dump them. Dump them here at Favor Life Church today before you leave. Before you walk out of those doors, it's like all regret gone. Gone, 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 gone. Go home. Why, why are you so happy today? He says, I, I don't have any regrets. I don't have any guilt. I don't have any grudges. I don't have any grief. It's all in God's hands. Worry about in the future. You got to get rid of all your worries in the future because God has a good plan for your life. God is not finished with you. Hello? God is not. The best is yet to come in your life. He's got a good plan in your life. Even on your deathbed, God is doing something good for you. We sang a song, Rejoice in the Lord. Always I say rejoice. 